Good afternoon and welcome back to One Twentieth. Today we are talking about the Mamiya RB67. Very well known camera, very popular, but I'm going to say something controversial. I don't like it. Okay, I'm going to immediately tone down that damning condemnation of uh, this camera and say it's actually a really good camera. Good lenses, it does work. However, uh, it has taken me three returned cameras and three returned lenses uh, to get here and this still doesn't work. I mean, it does, it works, but there's kind of workarounds. And I think the point here is that you can tell that it is a great camera system by the number of people on YouTube uh, for whom it is their favorite camera, namely Willem Verbeek, Carl McDougall, Jess Hobbs, Grain Check, um, plus others, I'm sure. It's a good camera system, but because it's a good camera system, some of these have taken a punishing. So this is a Mamiya RB67 Pro S. There were three models. The original, the RB67 Pro, uh, was brought out in 1970. The Pro S was brought out in 1974. And the Pro SD was brought out in 1990. So bearing in mind this Pro S was launched in 1974, it is a little bit primitive in some areas. So for example, this lever sets the mirror and cocks the shutter, but you have to separately wind on the film. So this, this, this one doesn't do both. I'm comparing it, of course, to the Bronica S2A, which was brought out in 1969, a year before this, which just from a mechanical point of view, seems better thought out. For me, there are some distinct advantages of the Mamiya RB67 over the Bronica S2A. It does have a massive viewing screen, which is really fantastic and it's really bright. It is a good screen. It has a leaf shutter, so no issues with flash sync and slow flash sync speeds. Uh, obviously, a leaf shutter will sync flash all the way up through the range. What appeals to a lot of people is it's six by seven rather than six by six. And, and, and we all know that the six by six, the square frames don't appeal to everyone and that's fine. But for a rectangular frame, it's not very rectangular. You know, six by seven is not a million miles from six by six. Six by seven is closer to six by six than it is to six by nine. And six by nine are the actual dimensions, the, the scaled up jump dimensions of um, it's the same ratio as 35 mil. So if you're looking for a camera that is gonna give you that kind of rectangular frame that you feel like maybe you've learned on through 35 mil, this is not really gonna do that for you. It is popular though, and that is why I decided that I needed to give one a go and to try one out. Uh, and so I did spend a bit of time trying to find one at a decent price. Um, in fact, I bought some that were not at decent prices. Uh, and a lot of them had issues. So I returned a couple of these before landing on this one. Then we've got the lens issues that I have had. Let's see, this is gonna be quite hard to see. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it, but we're gonna try and illustrate. Um, so this one, and this is very common with this 90 mil f3.5 lens, is to get a lot of separation on that rearmost element. Let's see if there's a way that I can show this to you. I can't really tell whether you can see that or not. You might be able to, but essentially this rear element does suffer from significant separation. So I returned at least two lenses with separation, with bad separation, uh, before settling on, in fact, it was these two. So let's just take this one off. So this one is an older, more battered lens. But, and what I've done is I've swapped out the rear elements so that this one, uh, which was functioning mechanically really well, but had a, a separation in the rear lens groups. And I got this one, which mechanically has some problems. It does not, it's slightly unpredictable with when it fires and when it doesn't fire. It's not working right anyway. I've had it open once already, um, and I think I've now identified the problem, so hopefully I'll be able to fix that. But essentially, one of them was mechanically okay, the other one had okay glass, so I swapped the glass to the mechanically good one, and now we've got a mechanically bad one with bad glass that will eventually get fixed by me. Um, and we've got one decent lens. 
So, this particular camera model seems to be working all right. I'm not finding any issues with it. Um, however, it has paint loss all over it. It's got some real uh, impact marks, impact dents uh, in various places around it. It's, it's had a rough life for sure, and it certainly looks rough and scrappy. The bellows are good. Uh, incidentally, I'll just show you the, uh, the, the, the focusing of this, which is via a bellows to the main body. Uh, it is light tight. Mechanically, everything works. So let's take it out and take some photos with it and see how it performs and uh, we'll go from there. All right, see you out there. Can you do me a favor? Go on the bridge again and swing from the thing. First test with the RB67 is out with the girls and finally seeing some sunshine. <laughs> Woo, careful. Definitely getting some nice results from this camera, but it did seem to jam up a few times. The shutter button suddenly wouldn't depress for no reason that I could see. Plus I put three rolls through it and these were basically the only ones in focus. So I was pretty much having some issues with this almost immediately. One of the main ones was this uh, shutter button jamming, just like there was a model that I sent back where, for exactly the same problem. Now. On this one, it seems to be, I'm pretty sure I've nailed down the, the problems. I think it can be tracked down to the rotating back. So in its current orientation, that is landscape. And to turn it to portrait, all you have to do is twist. So there's no uh, release to turn. You do have to keep twisting until it hits a stop, until you hear a click. Listen, there we go. But there's no button to release and allow it to start rotating. So. Uh, what I think has happened a couple of times to me is I've rotated it just a tiny fraction of a way and it jams up the shutter button. So it's something to keep an eye on, but it's not a major problem. Now, a bigger issue is that I got back fewer in-focus photographs than I would expect, um, given my own personal level of competence. And I do want to know why that's happening. So uh, next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna take it out to the garage and gonna take some photos of my mannequin. Um, and let's just see if under completely controlled conditions, uh, everything turns out okay. All right. Right then, we're out in the garage, slash studio, slash darkroom. Uh, we've got Gertie uh, set up in the hot seat. We've got the RB67 here. We've got some lights. So let's do some testing and let's find out why this RB67 is not performing as I would expect it to perform. I may jump in the hot seat a little later on and do some self-portraits. I'm gonna shoot black and white. I've got a few options. Um, I'm probably gonna start with Foma Pan 200. I might shoot a Pan F. Why not? I've had this pan for a long time. August 22. There it goes, it expired a couple of years ago. Whoops. This is what we're seeing in the uh, ground glass at the moment. Okay, let's find the shadow. Let's go somewhere here. And three, two, one. First problem is that the film back seems to have scratched the film. Now, foam is notorious for having quite a soft emulsion, but something's definitely doing some damage here. Next thing I want to draw your attention to is this weird black mark up here. More on that in a minute. Right, let's uh, mix it up a little bit. More scratches. This is going to be throughout the film, it would seem. Another thing to note here is the focus. I think I've just about got her right eye in focus, but definitely not her left. And bearing in mind this is a stationary target under completely controlled conditions, that's not good. Uh, now, let's get rid of Gertie. Uh, oh, actually, let's do a measurement first for uh, what we want this, and then we'll get rid of Gertie and we'll, I'll jump in. Woo! Eye to lens. Okay, first one of me, more scratches, and once again, right eye in focus, left eye not in focus. But I am right at the front of the lens and wide open at 3.5, so the depth of field will be paper thin. Time for some dressing up. scratches, focus off a tiny bit, and we're starting to see these black marks appearing again. But interestingly, they've changed shape. So whatever is causing this seems to be moving. And when I open the back to change the film, I find the culprit, but not the cause. This looks like a long sin thing, What the hell is it? So I am absolutely 
baffled where that is coming from. It's almost like winding the film through. It's like sh shredding a little bit of paper. That's all just come out of the film back. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Let's take some more photos. Now we're on to the expired Ilford Pan F and lovely detail as you would expect from Pan F but now we've got a different issue. I'm guessing this is due to the film being expired resulting in possibly incomplete fixing, not sure, but we're going to get this from the whole roll. Aside from the white spots everywhere, this one is a really nice image, exactly what I intended. When I go to wind on, it's harder to wind than I would expect. It's been like this on every film, but I'm only now starting to piece together a few things. So I think something is getting caught in this film back and it is shredding a tiny little sliver off the edge of the film. That would explain why I'm getting such resistance. This one's nice, focus was close, a uh, hint of those scratches again. And this one's my favourite from the shoot. White spots aside, I just love that the bellows allows you to get that close. And as I get a bit closer again, I miss focus, but just look at that bundle of crap in the corner. And take this back off and see if we're getting this kind of shredded paper again. Yeah, look, you see it in that corner? is trapped behind the dark slide. So I think we've got a snag in this film back. There's nothing being taken off there. I suppose there's a little, there's definitely kind of score lines along here. Let's go and develop and see what we got. So some very interesting things that I discovered out in my studio. Number one, I don't know why I'm struggling so hard to focus this thing. Because even some of the shots of, uh, of Gertie the mannequin were out of focus. But I was also doing some relatively complicated things, namely focusing wide open, very close. Um, you know, once you've got your subject that close to the lens at f3.5, your depth of field is really, really short. Now, the other issue, this is a really weird thing that's happening. Essentially, inside here, I've established where it's coming from. Yeah, it's these. Oh, I don't know if it, there's, there's basically these two little, I don't even know what they are. But there's essentially, there's a little sharp bit down here. Um, which is dragging along the edge of the film uh, and, and gradually shaving off the uh, actual emulsion, um, these, these little spirals. And you can actually see it on the negatives when we take a look at them. Another problem that I established whilst out taking photos of my kids is that this camera will fire with the dark slide in. Now, if we take a look at this dark slide, it is not an original. It says E-Tone for Mamiya 6.7. I've done some searching and you can actually, uh, you can still get these, they're still selling them. You can pick them up on Amazon, uh, I think, or eBay, one of the two, or maybe both. But whatever's going wrong, I can definitely fire this shutter with the dark slide in and it's not supposed to do that. Uh, found out because I had a whole, or like two thirds of a roll of uh, Pro 400H was completely blank. So there we go. Long story short, it is clearly a very good camera. Really nice lenses, tack sharp. I love that you can focus that close with these lenses. None of my other SLR cameras, medium format SLR cameras will, will focus that close. My opinion of this may be skewed because I've got such a, a hammered um, version of it here. Um, but I also received several other hammered versions of them before I settled on this one as the one that I was going to keep and use. Uh, so that is something that we all need to be aware of, right? You know, if it happens to me, it can happen to everybody else. There are clearly a lot of battered RB67s out there. There are definitely a lot of 90mm 3.5 sequel C lenses with separation issues. And it's not gonna cause you, you know, you're not gonna see that much on your images, but if you're buying a big, heavy, expensive camera to give you 
you know, you don't you don't buy one of these to take pictures with character. You buy one of these to take immaculately tack sharp images. So whilst you're not going to see a massive amount of distortion from the lenses with separation, I don't know, I just kind of think like that's not why we're buying a camera like this, right? In conclusion, it's a good camera. I like it. I get why other people really like it. I'm not going to keep this. It's going to go straight on eBay and off to another home with lots of provisos about the condition of it and probably, you know, a similarly friendly price. But I tried one, uh, I've had one in my hands, I've taken some photos with it, I've investigated, I've learned a bit about it, so that's great. I've got what I wanted from this. Up to you guys whether you want to try that or not. I would say the only thing, the only word of caution I would leave you with for Mamiya RB67s is be discerning. Um, in yours the selection of the model that you are going to buy because it does seem like uh you know they were used by professionals back in the 70s and 80s they've some of them have had you know a tough life they've been well loved and well used um but you can still get great pictures from them so there we go mammy rb67 time to move on coming up on the channel i have started the build of my portrait box so that is going to be coming up very soon. I have recently been repairing a Fuji GX680 and working out a battery adapter uh, to try and get that to work. So that's coming up very soon as well. That might be next actually, I think. And then the portrait box might take me another week or so. Fuji GX680 next. I've also now booked in a shoot to start uh, doing my wildlife on films. Hopefully doing some amazing wildlife shots with the Bronica ETRS. Flash with film is coming, uh, loads more black and white paper reversal. I've got some chemistry coming up, going to be mixing some developers to see if I can control that contrast on the black and white paper reversal. Loads coming up. If you're not currently subscribed, please do subscribe. Uh, and I'll see you next time for the Fuji GX680. Looking forward to that. Should take some amazing photographs with that. All right, see you then. Goodbye.